Google Maps has many features that makes exploring the world or other worlds, I have another video about this if you haven't seen it, go check it out, easier. And many of these features you may be aware of. I mean, you can obviously make trips to navigate, you can see the borders of countries, but in this video, I'm going to be showing off some features that you might not have known about. So to start, we are on the web version of Google Maps. So this can be found by searching Google Maps on a browser. And as you can see down here, there is a map mode toolbar. And since this map mode toolbar is pretty easy to find, I'm only going to be talking about one thing on it. And that is travel time. Now travel time is useful for if you're trying to, let's say make a day trip and your limit is three hours away. So let's say you live in, I don't know, Lafayette, Indiana, just a random city. You can see how far you can walk within the city in 15 minutes. It is the lighter blue section. You can also see within 30 minutes, but the most useful is driving. You can see how far you can drive in 30 minutes, a 30 minute drive, all the way up to six hours, depending on where it is and if it was built in. So let's see what is three hours from Lafayette, Indiana. So this can be useful for seeing exactly how far you can make it in a certain amount of time. Now the next feature I'm going to be talking about is seeing other borders on Google Maps. So as you know, you can see the borders of countries on Google Maps. For example, let's look at Belgium up here and you can see the borders of the country. As long as they don't have a controversial border, then you can't see it. Like let's go to China over here, which has several controversial borders, they don't officially show the borders. And you also probably know that you can see the borders of states as well. And finally, you probably know that you can see the borders of cities, but you can see the borders of a lot more than just those. So Turkey, for example, is divided into several provinces, and those are the dashed lines you can find here. And you can see the borders of these by searching them. But these provinces in Turkey are actually divided into different districts. So if you hold a click on the map for a second, it will appear with this gray marker and this box at the bottom. And if you click the name of this box, it will appear with the district. And this can be used for many different countries all around the world. Poland is divided into provinces, which are then divided into counties or districts. And again, you can see these by searching or using the marker method. Here is this county. Now, not only that, but let's move back to the US where you can also see congressional districts. Congressional districts are the districts in the United States where congressmen are elected from. So let's look up Texas 12th and let's see Texas's 12th congressional district and it will appear on the map. And you can do this for every state as long as they have a congressional district that goes up to that number. And there are probably examples of these in other countries as well. Let me know if you know any case of that similar thing in other countries. Now another feature that you can use on both the app and on the web version is seeing water borders. So I don't know exactly how this is useful. So I don't know exactly how this is useful, but if you do the same click method, you can see the borders of the lake or water body that you have clicked on. And I guess this could be useful for seeing exactly where lakes are, especially like lakes in Canada here, which are very fragmented, like seeing exactly where this lake goes. Although sometimes the water borders aren't even accurate, it does look like they are accurate here, but sometimes they aren't. Like, let's go to Lake of the Woods here and see. As you can see, it weirdly cuts off to the north here, even though stuff north of it is still Lake of the Woods. I don't exactly know why it's split like that, but it is. Now, there is one more feature I want to show you about the web version of Google Maps, and it is also on the phone version. The web version of Google Maps just really is the worst version, honestly. It needs some parity between the features, but the feature I want to show off is modifying roads. So let's go somewhere on Google Maps and click these three lines up here and then you can click edit the map. And what you can do is there's multiple features such as changing the location of a place, adding a place, but the feature I want to show off is add or fix a road. 
This will bring you into a road editor where you can edit different segments of the road. So as you can see, I can click a road and modify the points on it. So I can make it more accurate to exactly where it is, or I could change the road name, or I could declare it is closed. I could declare it's private. I could remove it. I could edit the direction and you can also add a road. So let's say there's a road missing. Let's say your city has new development and you want to add a road. You can also add a road by connecting different points. Now, of course, I'm going to delete this because that's not an actual road, but I think that this is probably the coolest hidden feature of Google Maps. This entire editor is not really clear on how to find it, but it's a really cool feature, I think. But now let's go over to the phone app version of Google Maps. So here we are on the phone version of Google Maps. This should work for both iOS and Android. And the first feature I want to show you on the app version of Google Maps is seeing where roads go. So if we zoom in to, let's say, Australia down here, and let's go find a road. Okay, so let's say the M31 here in Australia. It'll show you the exact length of the road going from one point to the next. Now, sometimes it's not the entire road because in this case, I think it's going to a different state, so it's different. But it's really cool that you can see the entire length of the road. You can, let's say, plan an entire trip traveling on one road. And I think that this feature needs to be added to the web version of Google Maps. I mean, they have it on the app version. Why won't they add it to the web version? The next feature I want to show you all is seeing park boundaries on Google Maps. So let's zoom into, let's say, Idaho here and click on the Boise National Forest. You can see that it shows the boundaries of this national forest and even shows some entrances. Those are the arrows that you can see here. And not only that, but it also shows you some different landmarks in the place. So here are a bunch of mountain peaks that it shows in here. And again, why isn't this in Google Maps web version. Google, if you are somehow watching this video, please, can you add these to the web version? It would make exploring the world so much better. Now, the next features I'm going to show you guys relate to the navigation section of Google Maps. And so let's make a basic trip, let's say in Los Angeles down here. Let's go from the Griffith Observatory down to the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County. Now, of course, as you know, it'll show the trip. It'll show multiple routes you can do. And there are also trip options. Now, this trip options tab is pretty interesting. You can make it avoid tolls, avoid highways. But another interesting thing you can do is you can set your vehicle. So you can say if your vehicle is gas, diesel, hybrid, or electric. If it's, let's say, electric, you can say what kind of plug you have. And I'm pretty sure that what this feature does is, let's say you have an electric, it finds around you some electric charging stations instead of gas station. Or if you have a diesel car, it'll find gas stations that have diesel. So I think that this is a really cool way to optimize your trip, and I would recommend setting your settings as the car you own. Now something else you can do is you can hit this preview button on the bottom of your screen, and you can actually preview the route so you can see every step you will take. So if you click this arrow, you will see everything you have to do. So it's turn left, turn right, go straight, and all the directions you need, you can see them here. Now, I don't exactly know how this is useful. Maybe just if you want to, for some reason, memorize your route, but it could be useful. Now, finally, one more feature, and this is probably the coolest feature of all of Google Maps, in my opinion, is immersive view. Now, unfortunately, I have to go vertical for this, so your viewing experience is a little bit worse, but immersive view shows your route from the sky with 3D buildings, and you can look all around, and you can just see exactly where you're going. And sometimes it'll even switch into street view, like we're seeing here. And then if you hit play route, it'll basically kind of be like drone footage following along the road, if it would load in here. All right, there you go. It'll be drone footage. You can see that there are crashes, so you can preview what your route is going to be before you are on this route. And you can skip ahead, you can fast forward, and it's just really cool to see this. Unfortunately, it's only in a few cities. Those will appear on screen. But I just think that this is an extremely cool feature. Another thing you can do with this is if you hit this 65 degrees here, you can change the time of day. So you can see, let's say, where sunset would be best or what lights there are on Google Maps. So 
here is what this looks like during sunset. You may want to know what direction the sun is in. And this is just beautiful in my opinion. This is just really fun to mess around with and I would love to see it both in more cities and again on the web version of Google Maps. But that is all I have for this video today. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you were able to learn something new about Google Maps. See you later.